Mrs. Internet, it's Monica, and today I am back with another manga, comics, graphic novel haul. I have recently acquired quite a few because I've ordered a couple, I got a few from the library, and then I also ended up gathering a few, quite a few, at um, Book Expo and Book Con, which was a surprise for me because it's like in years previous it hadn't been really a focus for me to like see what all the different comic houses were were releasing during the event. So it was really cool to just like experience Book Expo a little bit differently this year. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick off with some of the things I've purchased. The first one is the second Princess Jellyfish volume. I have really been loving Princess Jellyfish. It is giving me all the feels. It's also just like so over the top and fun and ridiculous. It's sort of like house bunny-esque. Basically you have this house full of women who are just very nerdy and awkward and really struggle to interact with like like the stylish people and especially with men and then one day one of them ends up befriending Karano who is a man who also enjoys to dress up as a woman and he's sort of beginning to bring them out of their nerdy ways a bit and there's some romance in it and I'm just really enjoying it it's just really fun and quirky so yeah I got volume two but then I realized that there are a lot of volumes of this manga so I think this is going to be the last one that I actually purchase and I'll be doing the rest from the library because I just don't have room to actually collect this entire series but if I did I would because they are very cute and then I picked up volumes 5 and 6 of Dreamin Sun this is about a young girl who ends up moving in into a house filled with young men and it's just about sort of all of them and all of their like relationship love struggles it's just really cute and it makes me so happy and yeah I really love this series and this one I am collecting because they are just so cute like I just like owning them but I love I think like what really drives this series is are the characters I'm really enjoying this series so I'm super excited to have the next two to read from the library I got the first uh, first volume of skip beat and this is an idol manga I these like a couple of these these next two I picked up because in my last manga haul I asked for recommendations from you guys and you gave so many recommendations like if any of you are looking for some amazing manga recommendations I highly recommend checking out the comments of that video because there are I just have like a eternal list now <laughs> of manga to check out um and this is one that had been on my radar but um I it had been recommended a couple of times so I bumped it up my to borrow list but yeah it's skip b I got the first volume so I could check it out see if I like it I don't know a whole lot more about it outside of the fact that it is an idol manga which basically means that it follows like pop stars and I think that this is sort of like one of the classic or like biggest idol mangas out there so really excited to read this one um and then the next one I picked up is a silent voice this is the first volume in that one and I picked this one up because it had been recommended a few times in the comments but also because I know it's Emma from Miss Emma Reads a Lot it's I think her favorite manga or one of her favorites so I knew that I had to pick it up because I totally trust her recommendations basically this is about Shoya who in elementary school is this huge bully and he and his friends sort of gang up on um, Shoko who is a girl who can't hear she's deaf and they basically bully her to the point where she has to leave the school and then he ends up shouldering all of the blame for that and she ends up coming back to the school like six years later and this is about them sort of exploring their relationship like years later. According to Anime News Network, it is a very powerful story about being different and the consequences of childhood bullying. Um, so yeah, I'm really intrigued for this one and I have heard like such amazing things from so many of you guys, so really excited. Then while I was at the library, I was just sort of browsing the shelves as one does and I came across the Emma manga, which is an adaptation of Jane Austen's Emma, but in manga form. And I've been actually wanting to reread Emma for a while now. And so I thought it'd be, I like, I knew that this existed, but I had sort of, it had fallen off my radar. I'd completely forgotten about wanting to pick it up. And then when I saw it, I was like, this would be a really cool, interesting way to reread Emma because I love 
I feel like so many of Jane Austen's other books don't get adapted nearly enough. I mean Emma's probably like the second most adapted out of all of her works but I just love seeing how different cultures and creators adapt Jane Austen's stories and just like the different things that they sort of take out of her stories because like di every creator I think takes something different away from her books and I think that that's really cool um, and I love Emma's character and she's like one of my favorites out of all of Jane Austen's characters I just love her um, so I'm really excited to read this and have this be sort of like my way of rereading the story of Emma lastly I picked up the first volume of Sabrina um, the chilling adventures of Sabrina so this is a sort of reboot of Sabrina the teenage witch but a horror version um, and this is a bind up of the first four or five of the comics. Um, I have been really wanting to pick this up because I've heard such great things about the comic but I also know that Netflix is doing, I don't, it's not an adaptation of this but I think it is kind of inspired by it because I think they're doing like sort of those horror elements maybe? That might be wrong. I don't know. I just love Sabrina the Teenage Witch so I'm very into like ingesting any form of her story that I can find because I think she's amazing. Alright so now on to the books that I picked up at Book Expo. First I have Aquicorn Cove and this one Katie my roommate actually picked up for me because she saw it and just thought that I would really enjoy it because the girl has pink hair like peachy pink hair in space buns and she's on a aquacorn. <laughs> this is LGBTQ focus but I'm not sure in what way which is I, I usually like to try and say like oh this has like lesbian representation or bi or whatever and I don't know for this one I just I, I just says LGBTQ focused um, in the someone's blurb but basically this is about a girl who moves to the seaside with her father she ends up discovering an aquacorn and they have an adventure together I don't know it just looked really pretty <laughs> at book expo Brandon Sanderson was doing a, a signing of his newest book uh, Skybound or Skyward something like that and I was devastated when I missed tickets for it I was so sad because I all I wanted for book expo that was like my number one but then I ended up feeling a little bit vindicated it turned out that they weren't giving away arcs of his newest book they were giving away chapter samplers so I felt a little less sad once I found that out um, however, as I was walking the show floor, I heard someone say Brandon Sanderson signing over here. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go investigate this. And it turned out that he was signing a new comic that he had written. And, and I'm assuming that this is a bind up of the first few issues. I had no idea that this was even happening. Um, but it is White Sand by Brandon Sanderson. Um, and it's part of the Cosmere universe. I'm not sure outside of that how it's part of his universe or what it's about. I was just pulled in by the guy saying that it was a Brandon Sanderson signing. There was literally nobody in the line and so I hopped in that line and I got to meet him and he signed my copy uh, which was really cool and yeah I, I love Brandon Sanderson's writing. I think he writes some of the best fantasy out there. Uh, in my opinion I just really love the way that he like creates stories. I think it's so masterful. This is not like the art style of this is not typically the kind of comic that I would go for but I'm willing to give it a try because it is a Brandis Anderson story and I'm intrigued to see like how his storytelling translates to comics because I feel like he is so verbose that it, it'll be very interesting to like read this format of his writing. Then I picked up Sheets by Brenna Fumler and this one comes out in August of 2018 so it comes out very soon and this one actually Kaylee picked up for me which was very nice. I was in line for Artemis Fowl and that signing but then this started happening and I was so sad because I really wanted this too and she went over and waited in line and got it for me which I just thought was very nice. So it is signed by the author but this is a graphic novel called Sheets and it's just so beautiful. It's about ghosts, about one girl who feels sort of like a ghost in her own life. She's 13 year, years old and she's in charge of running her family's laundromat 
and it just sort of feels like everything in life is conspiring against her and then you have Wendell who is actually a ghost and he has to like rely on a sheet to give him like a sense of identity as you can see on the cover um, and he ends up sort of like sabotaging and like having his haunts inside of this laundromat and it like sort of destroys her world even more um, and so this is about them and them trying to like find their path and find their identities and all of that and it just looks beautiful like that is one of the things that just really drew me to the story it's like the, the coloring of this is so pretty oh I was just like so excited when I saw it and then there's a really amazing like blurb on the back from Brian Selznick um, he says Brenna Thumler's first original graphic novel is a reason to celebrate she announced herself as an artist to reckon with when she illustrated Maria Marsden's adaptation of Anne of Green Gables now she's illustrated her own story of ghosts and family loneliness and laundromats I'm sure you'll be captivated and as eager as I am to see what comes next so on the first day of book expo I was talking for, to Emily from Possibly Lit and she was telling me about this amazing comic called Bingo Love which she ended up actually getting me a copy of so shout out to Emily thank you for grabbing this for me um so this is by T Franklin Jen St. Ange and Joy San and I think it's out now on the back it says take a trip through time with Hazel Johnson and Mary McRae as they fall in love at church bingo in 1963 break up because of pressure from their families and reunite 50 years later. So these are about two like elderly women who fell in love when they were young in the 60s and they were pulled apart because of homophobia and the time um and then this is about them like refining each other and i'm like starting to really get choked up just talking through that whoo anyways this sounds amazing i've heard such amazing things about this story and this author so i'm so excited to read it and then also at image comics they were doing a signing for one of my most anticipated trade paperbacks of the year and that is snot girl volume two i love this cover even more than the first one i don't know how that's possible but it's just so beautiful i um got to meet both brian Lee O'Malley and leslie hong and they signed like a piece of art that i can stick inside of this so i have to do that at some point but um they were so cool this is about lottie who is a fashion blogger who also has like who's kind of just a, a huge mess in life um, on top of having like really bad allergies so it, it deals with that and it deals with like social media pressure and just sort of that whole world and, and sort of makes fun of that whole world of like fashion influencers and stuff but it also has like this really interesting mystery running through it like suspenseful mystery and I really just need to know what's gonna happen next like the the last volume ends on stuff such a cliffhanger stuff and on such a cliffhanger and I needed the next one to know what happened so I'm so excited that it's out and I can finally read it and then lastly while I was at the image comics booth I ended up talking with a couple of the publicists publicists who were there and telling them about my channel and one of them when I said that I talk a lot about like YA uh, she like immediately went and picked up this one and handed it to me um, and this is Norway this one comes out in November of 2018 this is so this is the first book in a new series that takes a classic Scottish fairy tale and sort of turns it into something new. Um, it's about Sibylia who's always wanted adventure and then all of a sudden this uh, giant magical bull appears in her life and she's not sure if he's a monster or a man or what and it sounds interesting. <laughs> the publicist was very certain that I would like it so I'm definitely gonna give it a shot. Uh, if any of you have heard of this, let me know. Those are all of the comics, manga, graphic novels that I wanted to share with you guys. I'm so excited to jump into all of these. They just sound so fun and I'm so excited to be back in sort of this world of reading comics and manga and all of that. I'm hoping to do a wrap up soon once I like dabble into a few more series because I feel like it'd be kind of boring to just do a wrap up and it's like two series but I've read a lot of both you know. If you've read any of these or you're excited for any of these let me know in the comments down below or if you have any comics manga graphic novels that you've read recently that you've really loved I'd love to hear about them and I'll talk to y'all next time. Bye!